And here is student sample two. So again, more locks, chains, more metal. All right, so obviously, if you, if you know anything about Photoshop, the intensity of the color has probably been brought up a lot in these, but since it's already a natural kind of a bright color anyway, saturating the colors in Photoshop is a really good idea for rust. So if you haven't ever done anything with saturation, play around with your saturation levels in Photoshop for this particular project, especially if you have pictures of rust, it's going to be really compelling. A bad idea for this sort of photo would probably be to edit it in black and white. Black and white for rust isn't going to be as ex exciting or interesting, so I would highly recommend you stay away from that, but do things that are more brilliant, more bright for your project, all right? So this is sample two. Let's look at our last one. All right, so again, more rust, more vibrant, more saturated looking images. So we've got a lock and some chain right here and a gate, right? And then we've got some old rusted fire alarm kind of piping and things like this, and then just an old rusted tube happening over here. Make sure that you kind of note that the way that each of these collages has, has been laid out is different. Again, we want to pay attention to how they relate to one another. In this particular series, for example, notice that the composition is a line here, it's a line here, and it's a line here. So it's actually repeating that same shape over and over and they're relating to one another as it's being created. So it's not just, you know, locks, chains, and metal of all these different things. It is, but they're actually compositionally related. So that makes it a really interesting photograph that all goes together. Thank you so much for watching. This is educator.com's AP Studio 